Hey, as you know, I always welcome the Holy Spirit. And why do I welcome the Holy Spirit? Because without Him, nothing is going to take place. He is the power behind the name of Jesus to, to cause things to happen. And I, I say, Holy Spirit, control everything. Mike Olson died on the operating table getting a double lung transplant. He met his organ donor in heaven who had just died. Now, Mike, you were diagnosed with a condition called IPF. In layman's language, what was that? Idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, the scarring of the lungs uh, in the respiratory system, and they don't know what causes it. And what's the prognosis when you have that? It's a, it, you're uh, told that you have a terminal lung disease and to get your affairs in order. <laughs> you were on the transplant list. Yeah, yeah, almost five years. That January would have been the fifth year, starting the fifth year. Before you went into the hospital for the transplant, uh, you almost died again. You're, you and your wife are going on a drive, and all of a sudden, what walks in front of you? Well, I was going about 60 miles an hour down the highway. My wife and I just got done ministering to someone who was also dying of this terminal lung disease. And so she was worshiping right beside me on the way home. And we were just kind of, you know, excited that God used us to minister to somebody. And so we're driving down the highway and uh, all of a sudden, boom, right in front of our car was this gigantic deer. And it was like, Oh my goodness, you know, my wife and I looked at each other and I slammed on the brakes and I and we both cried out, Jesus. And all of a sudden, it was like, where where'd the deer go? I mean, it was like we drove right through it. It was crazy. It was like, what I was like, what happened? It was like in my mind, I'm like, I'm waiting on a transplant. Forget it. I'm gonna die from this deer coming through the windshield. <laughs> but God supernaturally just removed this deer. I don't know how it happened. We looked in our room. Now, did both of you see this or just one of you? <laughs> both of us. In fact, I turned to my wife and I said, making sure it wasn't just me. I said, honey, did you see that? She goes, yes, I saw it too. Right. How, did, how did you go through a deer? It, you know, what? It, it reminded me of watching Star Trek where you, you, you go through something and it dematerializes, you know? Well, listen, I know of at least three times the devil tried to kill you. He actually succeeded one time. Uh, so you're on the transplant list. You've been given a prognosis of a couple of years to, to live. You have no, no hope except a, a, a lung transplant, a double one. You get the call. Now, you're on the operating table. How did you die? What happened? Is it just that complex a surgery that you just were one that died? No, uh, you know, it was going so well. I mean, they prepped me for the surgery. I get wheeled in and there I am in the OR. I, of course, I'm on, you know, sedation, right? And th what happened was they, they got the first lung in. That was okay. Then they got the second lung in and they were ready to close me up. And they were, you know, to suture me up and everything. But the doctor took the clamp off too early and I bled out almost all the blood in my body. It, I mean, I can imagine it, 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 uh, the human body has a lot of blood that must have been all over the place. Yes. And, and when I asked my doctor time ago, I said, what happened? He goes, oh, man, it was it was horrible trying to get you back to life. So I knew something had happened. So anyway, when I bled out, they're trying to you know, get me back to life. And during that time, I'm I'm coming off the operating table and I'm going, I don't think this is supposed to be happening. <laughs> and then all of a sudden I hear these voices and they're like, who do you think you are? You're not good enough. And and just all these condemning voices. And I and I and in my mind I'm going, wait a second, I knew where that's coming from. And I just said, in the name of Jesus, shut up. And those voices stopped. They just didn't say another thing. Because we have the authority in the name of Jesus. And I knew that, even coming off the operating table. And then, you know, I just kept on going up. And I'm a jokester because I, I was like, well, at least I'm going up. I mean, I'm a minister. I knew I'd 
be with the Lord, but to myself, it was pretty funny. I even had my sense of humor during that time. So as I was going up, I look towards the ceiling and there's like swirling rainbow lights all over. And just, it was like unbelievable, beautiful. Dude, Mike, were you peaceful as you're, and it sounds to me like you left your body, you were up in the ceiling, you saw these lights, but as far as what were you feeling? Peaceful? Oh, absolutely. Like total, total, total like bliss. For no, 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 not another word I can think of, but totally like I wasn't fearful. I wasn't scared, even though I knew I was coming out of my body and I knew I died. But, you know, when those angels see the rainbow lights were angels <laughs> and it just I guess they were iridescent. And and when they were swirling around me at first in my finite mind i'm thinking is this the meds you know is this the anesthesia like you know right. i was trying to discern but then i saw that they were angels and they said mike's coming home you know because the angels rejoice when a believer comes into the presence of god and so they were saying mike's coming home and then the voice of the lord interrupted and said no he's just here for a visit and Instantly, I was in heaven at that point. And uh, I'm just standing there in heaven. And it's like, as far as the eye can see in front of me, beside me, every it was full of brilliant light. I mean, bright light. It was not blinding light. It didn't blind me. But it was like such a an atmosphere of love. It was an atmosphere of like... I, I explained to everybody, it was like everything was pulsating. The, the light was like pulsating. Everything was living, is what you're saying. It's living. Yeah, it was living. That's right, Sid. And it was also, it was like, I tell everybody, it was like pulsating Jesus. It's the very presence of God was so tangible. And I'm just, I just stood there. And I'm like, you know, all I could think about it was like, you know, I was thinking in my mind, all I could think about it was a, my life, like a life review coming before me. But I couldn't think of any bad thing I've ever did, n any sin I ever committed. And and then as a preacher, <laughs> I'm in my mind, I'm going, that's right. Jesus died on the cross. He took care of all my sins. That's why I'm feeling this way. This is what we, I've always preached about. And now I'm experiencing it. And so there I was. And, and then all of a sudden, I, it came back to my senses a little bit and said, wait a second, I was on an operating table getting my lungs taken out and put, new ones put in. And then this person had died. And so my, in my mind, I'm thinking, I, I need to find out if, where that person is. And I, and I just cried out in my spirit. It, it wasn't in my voice. It was in my spirit, man. And I said, I want to thank my donor. And as soon as I said that, I looked over my left side and there, and there was jesus jesus and the donor and, and i'm looking at i i'm i'm shocked i'm like looking at them and and uh and looking at the donor and he had his head bowed not in shame but we, we did something a little conversation back and forth real quick before the lord and i was like thank you and i got to tell him thank you and and he was, it was like, he was almost saying to me, like he, he, he was trying to converse to me real quickly because he's in the presence of the Lord. He, he was like, hey, I just signed, I signed my organ donor card. I wanted to do that. So we stopped talking to each other. And then the Lord looked at me and he put his hand on my shoulder and he said, Mike, these are your new lungs. Receive them. And I said, yes, Lord. As soon as I said that, I went whoosh down and back into the OR. And I believed I had to agree with heaven, agree with what Jesus was saying. I had to do that. I did have a thought. I could have stayed there. But I thought of my wife and my son, and I thought I had more work to do. And so when he said, receive these lungs, Mike, I said, yes, Lord. And I came back down to the OR. And at that point, I don't know, because I went into a coma, an induced coma after that. Now, let me ask you a question. Could you describe Jesus as best you remember what you saw because of the type of person i am you know i i would love to tell everybody such intimate details and for some reason god only allowed me to see his image right 
but it was kind of fuzzy to me. Like I couldn't see the details. I did see, you know, I know did my donor, because everyone asked me what my donor looked like as well. And I said, they both look like they had Middle Eastern color skin, right? That's what, that's what got me. It was like, wow, okay. It wasn't, anyway, that's how I saw it, but I didn't see the details. I, I saw his long hair. I saw him in a robe, but you know, other than that, he, it, it, the brilliant light all around me, I just didn't, it was just, I was just in his glory. You know, that's about all he allowed me to see. So two times the devil tried to snuff your life out. Then there was a third time. You've got these, uh, 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 you know, transplanted lungs inside of you. You've had a number of surgeries. Um, and you're in a weakened state, and you get COVID. Uh, were they really worried when you got COVID? Yes, because you know when COVID first came out, um, they they kind of warned transplant patients: stay inside your house, stay masked up, don't you know don't be with people and because it's very dangerous if you would get this uh, at that point because everything was so new he, they said you'd probably die and uh so and they had no uh really treatments at that time they they just said well we can give you molecule antibodies and i'd hope for the best right and so uh anyway i came down with covid uh and uh, it was that summer after the transplant in in, in january and uh so anyway, it was just, it was just an incredible. Wait, was it a bad case of COVID? Yes, it was, it was, you know, yeah, we were in bed for like three weeks and I, I, I did not want to go to the hospital because I didn't want them to put me on a ventilator. So I, I got, I went to the hospital and I got some IV treatment and then I came home, but it, it was, I'm telling you, Sid, it was the prayers of the people, people praying for me that uh, I walked out of that. Somehow I walked out of it because the transplant doctors and nurses, they were saying, you know, this is incredible because, you know, it's very fragile for you to be getting this uh, disease and, and, and it could kill you. So uh, once again, we were like, OK, God, uh, this is the third time. So you have something in mind for us. Well, you, you know what I believe? I know why. I know why the devil wanted you out. I know why God wanted you here. And both are true facts. The devil wanted you out. God wanted you here. When you share this story, God moves supernaturally on the people. Uh, wh wh what goes on when you share this? And you've been sharing this all over the country. Yeah, it's just that, you know, when we first, when you first have a near-death experience, you know, you, you tell your family, your friends, and then... And the Lord said, no, I want you to start telling your story on a wider scale. And I didn't know what he meant by that, but I just said, God, you'll, you'll open the doors because I'm not going to. And uh, so we started sharing uh, in a supermarket, you know, or uh, for instance, in a hotel. We were down in a hotel in Florida and this uh, African-American lady is at the counter and she's like, so what are you down here for? And I said, oh, I'm finally get, getting to go on vacation because I had a double lung transplant. And I said, well, I died on the table and went to heaven and got to thank my donor. And she goes, honey, now you tell me that. Tell me that whole story. <laughs> as soon as I told her, it was almost like she was going to fall out. The, whole, the presence of God came down so strong and she started weeping. And she says, I needed you to come to my uh, hotel today. I needed you to tell me that story because just this morning I was struggling with, is heaven real? Is, is there really a place called heaven? And she said, now I know. And she hugged me. And, and that's the Lord. He was drawing people. So every time I tell a story, people are going through things and, and they, and they, like, I just, I just had a confirmation class in the Catholic Church, uh, someone said, could you talk to these students? And this is this past Sunday. And I said, sure, I'll, I'll do a Zoom call with them. And so I talked to them. And then after that class was over, one of the students came up to the teacher and said, you know what? I was really struggling to see if God even existed. But when I heard Mike tell his story, I believe it now. Well, you know, Mike, there was something that you said that stuck to me. And that is when you got to heaven, you tried to, because you knew you were coming into God's presence, uh, you tried to remember the mistakes you made in life. And the Bible says there's none righteous, no, not one. Uh, the Bible said we've all fallen short 
of the of the mark of of the glory of God. So uh, and you couldn't remember anything. You know why? It was the blood of Jesus. If this is what, you know, because I'm Jewish, I study it from an old covenant as well as a new covenant perspective. And a lot of Jewish people don't know this, and a lot of Christians don't know this, but there is a Jewish prophet by the name of Jeremiah. And in the 31st chapter, he prophesies a new covenant is coming. And one of the things that he says about this new covenant is exactly as if it was written in the New Testament. In fact, I don't think there's anything new in the New Testament. I think everything in the New Testament is hidden in, in, in the Tanakh, in the Jewish scriptures. But it, this is what God promises with this new covenant. I, God will remember your sins no more. It's not like we, we Jews have uh, Yom Kippur, Day of Atonement, and we have an animal sacrifice. Well, we should, but because Jesus came, we can't anymore. You need a temple. There's no temple. God saw fit to get, remove the temple so that it was impossible to do it the Torah way. So the only way a Jew can get right with God is the new form of Judaism called Rabbinic Judaism. Uh, a lot of people don't know this. One group of Jews followed Yeshua. They were the first followers who then led the Gentiles to the Lord, and they got to be known as a non-Jewish thing. But it's all Jewish. Uh, and then the other group were the ones that rejected Jesus, like my ancestors, and we reinvented Judaism because there was no temple, and we did the best we could, and we did a pretty good job. The only problem is we don't get in on the uh, on God saying, I remember your sins no more. All the prayer in the world, all the, the, the study, giving, uh, doing good deeds, uh, uh, all, all the, all the prayer in synagogue attendance and, 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 and gold Jewish stars for attending, uh, your, your Shabbat school uh, or your Sunday school and the Catholic church or the Protestant church. It all counts for nothing unless you believe that the Messiah came, perfect man in human form who died in your place. And by his blood, God says, I remember your sins no more. And by his, uh, his body that he sacrificed, by the stripes that came on his body, you were physically healed, spiritually healed, emotionally healed, healed, healed. I want to say this prayer with those. You could be going to church, Catholic, Baptist, whatever, but if you don't know him, then when you hear a story like Mike, you know it's all true. But you can know it's all true even without his Mike's story. You can know for yourself in the way that it's necessary for you to know. Repeat this prayer. Mike, if you'll repeat this prayer and you follow what Mike says, uh, uh, and, and if you'll say this, and I know you believe it, I want you to just say it and believe it and believe God's word. This is what God says. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you'll believe it in your heart and you will be born from above. Repeat after me. Dear God. Dear God. I've made many mistakes. I made many mistakes. And I'm so sorry. And I'm so sorry. I believe. I believe. Your blood. Your blood. Washes me clean washes me clean and just like mike just like mike when i get to heaven when i get to heaven i won't remember my sins i won't remember my sins and there'll be no record in all of heaven of my sins and there'll be no record all of heaven of my sins but before i get to heaven before i get to heaven i want heaven on earth I want heaven on earth. And heaven on earth is walking in heavenly peace. And heaven on earth is walking in heavenly peace. And if, since I know the Messiah. And since I know the Messiah. Who can be against me? Who can be against me? If God is for me. If God is for me. No one can be against me. No one can be against me. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. Amen. 
Amen. Mike, I want you to pray for the presence of God, the sweetness of God has been in the studio this whole time. I want you to pray right now for people to be physically healed. If God gives you a word of knowledge, fine. If not, by his stripes, those that are viewing, we're healed. That's what 1 Peter 2, 24 says. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are Jehovah Rapha, our healer. Lord, by your blood, by your stripes, Lord, we are healed. Lord, there's so many uh, in uh, days of affliction right now. So many things are happening in the earth, but you, Lord, are strong and powerful, and you are able, more than able, to touch bodies, to touch minds. In Jesus' name, Lord, touch them. Go go out, Lord, and, and just surround them with your angelic hosts, Lord. Surround those in hospital rooms right now. Surround those who are, have a lung disease right now, Lord, that they would feel the touch of the Holy Spirit right now where they're where they are Lord Lord we thank you we thank you Lord for your your hand extended always in mercy always in grace always in love toward us and Lord we thank you you know I said before we uh, leave but there's somebody who has, has a, just been diagnosed with a heart murmur and the Lord is healing you right now you've been watching this broadcast and you, you you knew you were so concerned when the doctor told you this but the Lord is taking care of that and they, there's a name a man named Bruce and you've been really discouraged and and actually you thought you lost your faith but the Lord's saying no Bruce I'm I've heard your cry in this in the middle of the night and like no one knows and no one understands but i heard the cry says the lord and i am going to heal you of those damaging emotions those wounded words that were spoken against you i am now touching you right now bruce receive wholeness in jesus name and how about praying for people that have any kind of a lung disorder you've got the faith for that yes Heavenly Father, you told me when I was first diagnosed with this terminal lung disease that, that I would be able to pray for people who had lung disease. And I come right now in the mighty name of Jesus, all those who are afflicted with COPD, pulmonary fibrosis, pulmonary hypertension. And I speak to those diseases, get off of these people, get off of every person who's listening, who has this disease. And Lord, we're, we're believing for a healing so they wouldn't have to have a transplant. So they wouldn't have to suffer. They, they can not be on their oxygen, Lord, but they can be free and take a deep breath. Lord, I thank you that you're even moving, even in every home, every loved one who's been afflicted by these lung diseases and lord that you're setting them free now in jesus name amen and father i thank you that all you bore all of our sicknesses according to isaiah 53 all of our pains all of our diseases and according to first peter 2 24 and isaiah 53 by your stripes the wounds you took in your body we were healed and i speak to joints that have pain whether it's your neck spine arms legs fingers toes what back is really and i'll tell you what faith without a corresponding action is dead that means by faith if you have a pain in your body, test it as best as you can right now. For instance, if you have a backache, what would I do to test it? I'd bend over, just stand up and bend over in the name of Yeshua, that's Hebrew for Jesus. In the name of Jesus, walk into your healing and I'll say a nice Jewish closing prayer, Shalom Alecha, peace to you and your house, amen.